Hey, what's going on guys and welcome back to another video. So in this one, we have another Shopify store review, another flipper.com Shopify store for sale. However, this week it is a bit different. So the Shopify store I want to show you today in question is called Rummy Kaiser. If you've never seen one of these videos before, then basically the way it works is I find these stores that are for sale on flipper.com and we take a look behind the scenes of the inner workings and the inner makeup of these proven and successful Shopify stores. So today we're going to be taking a look at exactly what the Shopify store looks like so we can take design inspiration. Of course, when we see somebody's Shopify store, we can then see exactly what products they're selling. So it's great for product research. But today there is a bit of a twist. So this particular the store is not an English store, not an English speaking store. English is not the first language. One of the most powerful strategies, in my opinion, when it comes to drop shipping is taking an already proven, tried and tested product that you know is 100% a winner and then selling it in a country that it has never been sold in before. If a product is successful in the US, then you can pretty much bet your bottom dollar that it will be successful in Australia. It will be successful in the UK. It will be successful in Germany, Sweden, Denmark, all of these different European countries, obviously by Australia, of course, that have a high English proficiency score, i.e. they understand English and they can speak English very well. So you haven't even got to go to the extent of translating your ads, but because they are forgotten about countries, they will have not seen your products before. You're more likely to get their attention and therefore more likely to get the purchase. You don't have to take my word for it. I'm going to show you this blog post from Obelo back in the day. Now, forgive me, this is from 2017. So this is going on six years old now but in my personal opinion this still applies today so to Obelo if you're new to dropship and you probably don't know who they are basically they were the connection the original connection between AliExpress and Shopify so every single dropshipping order pretty much at the time passed through Obelo this gave them the power to produce stats like this and record information and basically see where the market was at this point so back in 2017 this is the total amount of orders they processed through their platform and we we can obviously see that the US here is absolutely a powerhouse when it comes to drop shipping. Basically what this means is the amount of orders that has gone to the US far outweighs the amount of orders that have gone to its nearest competitor, which is Great Britain. If we scroll down just a little bit more, this is the USA versus the rest of the world, and it still beats it by a fair and considerable amount. So what this tells us is that the US in comparison to all of these other countries, Australia, Canada, France, Denmark, you could argue that the US is saturated. The other downfall as well to advertising in the US, not to go off on too much of a tangent, is that you could do this yourself. Go into your ad account, just dedicate, let's say 20 pounds to this, spend five pounds in the US, five pound in the UK, five pounds in Australia, five pounds in Canada, switch the ads off and then see how far, what reach, how many people see your ad in each of the countries. And what you will find is that in the US it reaches the smallest amount of people and that is because it is one of the most competitive places to advertise. So you could argue that the US is saturated in the sense that it's very competitive with advertising and it's saturated in the sense of drop shipping. So when you're advertising products over there, it won't be the first time they will have seen that product and therefore they could become blind to it. Back to the original topic of the video, I feel like it was important to show you that just to illustrate and give you some kind of contextual information behind this store and why it's been able to be so successful because once you see the products these products are nothing special they are done many times before and what many people would call saturated but because they've been advertised in countries where they're not saturated they've been able to become very successful so the site age is 11 months the monthly profit is four and a half thousand us dollars which is more money than the average person makes here in the uk certainly so you could argue they've been able to get some very decent success in a very short time frame imagine what you would be doing with that sort of money in 12 months time if you don't earn it right now and the beauty as well with a business of this size probably takes some 10 maybe 15 hours a week um, to run again freeing up a lot of time for you to spend doing those things that you do enjoy so for example one of those things for me is um, playing golf 
So this is well-established e-commerce brand, sells a range of beauty, fashion, health, home kitchen. It's a general store. It sells products from lots of different niches. General stores were like the original go-to store back in the day when I first started um, in 2016. And since then, they've kind of slowly faded out. The reason being is because people don't trust them as much. If somebody is selling a beauty product from a branded beauty store and they have influencers and everything they do is beauty related, and then you see that same product on a general store right next to some fishing lure, then you're probably going to pick the branded store over the general store. So the brand consists of four different websites, each serving a different market, including the Netherlands, Belgium, Sweden, Denmark, and Germany. So all of those least competitive, all those countries that we just saw in the Obelo study, which were less competitive. In the last 12 months, revenue of over 600,000 US dollars. And that's again, just to reiterate, is in its first year. So that is the beauty of dropshipping. You can turn things around very, very quickly if you know what you're doing. A lot of potential for further the growth by expanding sales channels such as Google, TikTok, and Pinterest. So these are channels that they're not exploiting. So this would indicate this is backed up and confirmed in a second. I will show you this to you that their main focus is Facebook ads, um, which of course includes Instagram. Okay, so operations, they have one supplier in China in which they're sourcing all of their products from. They've been working with them from the start. They also manage our shipments, making the whole process very straightforward. So this could be an agent type, what people call them. Um, could be CJ dropshipping because they can source pretty much anything. Could be someone like BS Dropshipping who literally go into your Shopify store. You can give them permission. They will fulfill the orders and rather than pay for each order individually, they just send you a bill at the end of the day and you can even prepay for your orders forwards as well, which means they can even dispatch the order same day um, in some cases. They test 10 products per week on Facebook and Instagram. Once the product is validated, we scale the product for one to two months. As the business owner, I do product research and scaling the profitable campaigns. Most of my time is spent on product research and media buying approximately 10 hours a week, like I said. Um, if we just quickly go back up, they have an operations manager and store manager, um, as well as two staff from Philippines. So I would guess they would be taking care of order fulfillment and customer service inquiries, allowing the owner to focus on the most valuable things, which is of course, finding those products and running the ads. Let's take a look at their revenue and profits then for the last 11 months. We can see there's a massive spike. This is obviously gonna be Q4, which it is. They had a fairly modest start. Well, I say modest, so June they did only $800 and then July ramped straight up to over $20,000. So I imagine in these first few months, they were testing a lot of products, trying to find what works so that when they came into Q4, they could scale very aggressively. With their best month being December, with quarter of a million in turnover and $40,000 in profit in one single month, which again is more than the annual wage here in the UK. So within the course of June to December, so what's that, seven, eight months within the course of eight months, in one month, they were able to make more than the average annual wage in that one single month. So pretty impressive. Let's jump onto their Shopify store then and see what it actually takes to produce those kind of results. It's nothing crazy, crazy professional or it's nothing that's gonna cost you much to replicate. You could create a store that looks very similar to this very quickly if you know what you're doing. If you want to know what theme they're using, my Koala inspector tells me that it's the Sense Shopify theme. So if we just scroll down then so we can see what sorts of products they're selling, we can see we know it's a general store, beauty products, health, toys, home and kitchen gadgets. Let's take a look at toys because this is probably where some of their biggest sellers came from during the Q4 months. Toys obviously explode in popularity as we come up to Christmas. And as we can see, they're all the kind of stereotypical drop shipping products. Small, quite cheap, nothing too extravagant products that have been tested and done time and time again and what most people would consider quote unquote saturated. Let's take a look in their home and kitchen niche because again, this is another popular one. And again, if you go into AliExpress, within the first 10 seconds, you will see at least one of these products. It's nothing crazy here. They're not reinventing the wheel. They're simply taking a tried and tested and proven concept in one country and taking it to another. Let's have a look at this Marble Mania game then because this is actually a product that featured in one of my product recommendations um, during those Q4 months. Definitely a brilliant toy in my opinion, especially to target that kind of grandparent audience who's gonna be looking for a gift for their grandchild. So let's take a look at what their product description is, see what's going on here. So they have a pretty nice bundle offer. As you can see, it's quite seamless and um, the way it integrates into the store, um, the typical kind of variant format. They have different tabs for free shipping, which explains what's going on with all of these different things, contact information, satisfaction guarantee, and free shipping. So all of those kinds of behind the scenes questions that you need to answer if you're gonna convert somebody into a customer. And then if, as we go down then into their actual product description, you can see it's a text 
book description, which you've probably seen me talk to death by now. If you follow along with my channel, it goes GIF, paragraph. Sometimes you'd have a heading there. So the typical one would be GIF or image, followed by heading and paragraph, followed by GIF or image, heading or paragraph. And then they're highlighting the attention points or the key points in bold to naturally draw the consumer's attention to those words. So that being said, then let's take a look. They've got actually no reviews. And what I'm going to do is try and find a product that has some reviews. So what I've done is I've opened up some of their best selling products um, just to see if they have any actual reviews on them. That's their contact page. And they don't seem to have any reviews on their product pages, which is quite interesting, quite shocking really as well um, to see how they can be so successful and not even have like kind of one of the fundamental things everybody should have on their product pages. But what this reminds me of is dropshipping about six years ago. I used to be able to put together these very basic general stores that literally just followed the natural templates of what Shopify gave you, put some products on there which had that wow factor and a bit of a USP. And as long as you're selling it for a pretty decent price, then people were happy to buy it because they're not as savvy as, as they are today. Perhaps what I could do one day, um, if you guys want to see it, that is, I will, I've still got my original, 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 I'll kind of keep it for like reminiscing reasons. So I can go back and kind of see where it all started, but I've still got the original Shopify dropshipping store that I started back in 2016. And it looks very similar to this in terms of how there was very little kind of design and effort gone into it. There's even some of the same products on there as well. So perhaps if you guys want to see that, leave a comment down below and I can get that recorded. No problem at all. To summarize the Shopify store, then they are selling in countries which are not saturated, which are not used to seeing dropshipping ads. The site is only 11 months old and in that time they've been able to turn over 600,000 US dollars and have months where they're making profits upwards of 20, 30,000 dollars. And that is because, like I mentioned earlier, they are taking a proven concept, a proven product and taking it to a different country where people won't have seen it before, where people won't be as used to being spammed and seeing the same ads over and over again and seeing the same e-commerce sites over and over again. And when something is new and when something is fresh, it's much more likely to get attention. So if you're watching this video and you wanna take anything from it, go back to that original test that I said, dedicate 20 pounds of spending five in the US, five in the UK, five in two other countries taken from this list here. So Great Britain, Australia, Canada, France, Denmark, and see for yourself, see if it's cheaper to advertise there. And if it is, then what I would recommend is dedicating your store and building the store around those countries. And with that being said, then guys, thank you very much for tuning into the video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it inspired you to get started in your journey. And more importantly, I hope it brings you some success and you never know, perhaps in 11 months time, you'll have a very similar store, which you'll be looking to sell an exit strategy for $80,000. Thanks for watching guys. Any comments, questions, or video suggestions, just post them down below. I do read every single comment so I will get back to you. Thanks again, and I'll see you in the next one on Wednesday. Cheers.